To Matt Maneri and Bill Frizzell. So it's only you and Craig. <laughs> from oh, okay. The quartet, so. Right, right. Connecting the dots. But, uh, you, you, you know, I remember seeing you the first time. I think it was with Bern in uh, Porgy, like in Porgy and Bess in Vienna in 2012, maybe. Yeah, a long, yeah. A long time ago. And, uh, but you you know i always loved your drumming but especially your composing and uh i wanted to start this talk with interpret it well and mm. uh you know first your connection with frizzell how did that happen actually for, i mean since me being a guitar player um yeah i i met bill a long time ago he was uh for a while while he still lived in seattle he was renting sharing the rental of a bottom floor of a building I was in, you know, in oh, really? uh, Brooklyn. Oh, okay. So that's, no, and actually, I think I'd met him before that. He had showed up to a show or two of mine in Seattle, like a long time ago, like in the mid, 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 late first decade of the 2000s, you know? Oh. Um, so yeah, I, I met him then and I was always just a, a fan, you know? And uh, then yeah, we, 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 you know, and also stuff around like us both working with John Zorn, things like that. I'd, I'd see him around New York, you know, and, and then he moved to New York and then yeah. I started seeing him more and more. And, um, yeah, he showed up to a show of the, my, you know, the trio with Craig and Matt and I, and, uh, yeah, he was really comp, like comp. I think he liked the gig a lot, you know, he was just, and then he was, you know, he was texting me asking me about, about the music and stuff. And, oh, really? and oh, we wow. hadn't really, yeah, I don't think we had played before then, except maybe on a, like a Zorn Cobra piece, which is, a you know, it's like a lot of, yeah, it's a, you know, 10 yeah. to 15 musicians or something like that. So I'm not sure we even played together on that piece, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I didn't know how, how it was going to go. We just decided to. I just asked him if he wanted to do a gig first, you know, and and then that was really fun. You know, we just did a rehearsal and did a show at the Stone oh, okay. in uh I think early 2020. So that that's kind of how that started, but yeah, it was just like gradually being around each other, I guess. Yeah. It's not nice to hear him in this context, you know, because usually in his music it's, you know, it's quite it's Frizzell, you know. But with, mm -hmm. with with you, it's it's kind of more freed up, and it's really nice. Oh, nice to, to hear him investigate these are, areas. I think. Yeah, yeah. He, I feel like I. Yeah, I, I can't say I. I don't. I haven't heard all of his records. He has a lot of records. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, all this the stuff. You know, I've been just listening to him for a long time, and um, yeah, I think I was. He, he was generous with how he really got into the compositions, you know, yeah. on this. So, so he was definitely investigating what was, what was there, like Matt and Craig do as well, you know, like we all do, but so that's like, like, I'm, I'm, you know, grateful for that. <laughs> I, yeah. I hope he, I hope he had a good time doing it, you know? No, I, I love it. It's, you, you know, anything with Frizzell on, it's usually so good, you know, whatever he plays with it, Duncan Sheik or with you or his stuff, it's just like, man, right incredible man but like yeah you, i agree you, you mentioned compositions like it's some beautiful stuff you wrote i mean already on the bell you know you're composing uh how did you approach this one i mean did you know like when you wrote the music it's going to be frizzell and matt and craig i knew it was going to be matt and craig because some of these matt and craig and i had been playing uh, mm. you know different versions of them and then a lot of them, you know, we did, that band used to play on, you know, go on tour quite a bit, you know, as far as what's, you know, as far as bands in New York yeah. currently, which is, you know, it's it's not easy to tour these days. <laughs> oh. but, uh, 
Um, so yeah, I and I think the the show Frizzell came to in like I guess that was late 2018. We were playing that music, and I finally was feeling like it, the pieces I was writing were were working. You know, because we did when we did the Bell, we went on tour for that like a you know yeah. a whole lot and, and all in a row, like in the states, a couple of Europe things, just different things and. Like that music really started working. So I was trying to take those lessons, you know, like it became maybe the first three tracks on the bell. We'd play that as a whole set for an hour, you know, yeah, sure. like they kept getting longer and more expansive. And um, I, I guess I was like, when I was writing the newer stuff, I was like, what, how is that working? And how could I just cut to cut to the chase and get, you know, right in a way where where we're actually how how the band plays. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, so we so that's what I was doing, and I, I had to hone it. I kept rewriting stuff. You know, over over after tours and you know things like that, and between gigs. You know. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. So that so a lot of that was working by the time you know Bill saw it, and then when. I, I still I changed it even more again when when I knew Bill was going to play with some of those things and then I think one of the things was just new altogether you know um, yeah. so yeah I didn't so so Bill was definitely it was like more like rearranging I guess but but in a way that then when he came to it I real you know some stuff he seemed to gravitate towards naturally and yeah. other stuff maybe it didn't make as much sense or something so i'd i'd have him just place just make something up you know yeah. <laughs> so that happened too that happened too but it definitely sound it sounds like the piece because you know matt and craig and i are hammering on these this other stuff that's all interconnected you know so yeah so but you know in the same way i think like i tend to do that with players like if they I want it to make sense to them or otherwise let's just do something else, you know? Yeah, so, sure. so we were that all that rewriting I was doing, I was constantly throwing out stuff that wasn't somehow clicking, you know, but then, then Matt would get something that where it just, if you know, if it just sounds like Matt, then that's, that's a good part for him, you know? Yeah. Like if you write something and it makes them sound like that person, you know, yeah. and they come, they bring it alive, you know, that's, that's, oh. that's what you're looking for when you write how do you start usually um some some really small thing and i tried to if keep um... keep focused on that you know even an interval or you know i play some piano so i, I write on piano quite a bit um but the vibes are always nearby and sure. you know i'll think of things or you know some chord or some fragment of a melody and then i just develop it really in the most <laughs> it's the most boring process ever. You know, it's all just kind of like c coming up with the system and then trying all the parameters of it. And then eventually your ear takes over, you know, like yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah, sure. for me, no system is interesting enough on its own. Like you have to break the rule at some point, you know, and then that's when it, I find that's when it becomes alive and feels like a piece. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, when I listen to your tunes, they're always so long and, you know, de develop, they move from, so many vibes you know happen in a composition and i like you, you know i like that if you know if you have a 16 minute tune how do you envision it i mean i i've spoken with michael formanek about that you know who, whose tunes are like movies you know they travel like but yeah you know, with you like how do you envision a long composition uh, like on maybe like on on interpret it well for instance like yeah that. like the mixed metaphor i think that's like 17 oh, or 18 yeah. or yeah that's all i really feel like that's all i mean there's a ton of blowing on it obviously <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. there's that that adds to it of course but uh yeah i really feel like that one in particular is it's really all coming from that melody that bill plays um that that melody yeah that's another piece i, I reworked a, a lot you know and uh yeah and there yeah basically it's it's all 
I think you could analyze it and, and realize it all, including that end, the whole long and vamp section, both all that stuff is all, you know, that, that melody Bill plays also yeah. comes back over yeah, that section. Yeah, it's like a revisit. Yeah. yeah, and then the fourth, you know, the kind of fourth-ish or whatever it is, um, you know, the like the sort of baseline under that, that's all, that's all in the melody as well, you know? Um, so, so that's all pretty simple. And then there was some, there was some background. There's like a, on the record, it was a, a duo between Matt Maneri and Bill Frizzell, um, you know, sort of early on in the piece and Craig and I are playing these backgrounds under them and that stuff, I threw out and then Matt said he wanted it back, <laughs> you know, so, cause I was like, this is just too much writing. You know, I got to get rid of some of this stuff. And then Matt was like, I missed that where that comes in under what we're doing. Cause it changes, changes the scene, you know? Yeah. And, definitely. Uh, it's a nice so I put it, I put it back in like, yeah. Between rehearsal and the recording, I put it back in cause Matt was, you know, <laughs> Matt complained to me about it. So Oh. And I think those those are just, you know, these di like tightly voiced dyads between the vibes and piano. And I can't remember what relation that has to the, you know, that beginning melody, which is yeah. a, a thing I wrote sort of all at once. And I'm sure it has something, but, but you know, then again, maybe it was something else for contrast sake, you know. Yeah. I couldn't remember why I wrote that in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you, you, Matt, and Crack. Uh, I mean, you have like an incredible chemistry going on. When did you meet those guys for the first time? When when did you play for the first time together? Um, all three of us. Yeah. Um, I think it was twenty thirteen. We did oh, already. Okay. Yeah, I had a, and I just got. I forgot why someone at some club either reached out to me or I wrote them just to set up a gig and i didn't have anyone yet you know and i had a band called these arches at the yeah, time yeah sure i love that one yeah and um then craig you know i i, I just called craig because you know i just thought i'd just try something new you know and I, I i called craig and craig and i craig had written me up for it to play a gig with him and i couldn't do it you know so and he had mentioned something like god oh, might be cool to to you know to see what happens if we play or he said something like that and then i so i was like oh that'd be great you know and then so then i i called him for that and then i said well we could do duo or you know maybe i should call you know call it is there a third person you'd want to play with and he's like well i always like playing with matt you know matt Maneri, and and i had met i i kind of sought out matt when i came to new york because i was a big big fan of his you know oh really oh well, okay and then yeah and then he and i had done a little bit of playing with shazad ismaili Mm -hmm. together and then you know some other sort of gigs we just ended up on together and um you know and i was such a big fan of um randy peterson the drummer oh also. man i love randy yeah yeah so so uh you know i was always trying to i was like well why he already has randy why would i even play with matt because <laughs> because i love the sound they're like their duo record light trigger like so much that yeah, I was kind of like, well, I'll just, you know, Matt's a nice guy. So I guess that's enough reason. I'll just keep playing with him, you know? And then, so then, so then Craig said that, and then I said, oh yeah, let's, let's try that. And, um, and then that gig was, it was no, no written music. We just improvised. And it was yeah. really, I just talked to someone else that was at that gig. And I don't think it was just in my head. I think it was just a really great gig, you know, like, um, you know, just chemistry wise, it just, like, yeah. there was, there. there was no no second guessing anything it was just all music like we were all after the same thing the whole time and uh yeah so then then i still had my band i knew craig was you know getting super busy and yeah. you know he was already doing stuff on ecm so i was like all right well that was great but i'm definitely not going to do that again because i just thought i'd you know leave them alone you know and then then around you know soon after that manfred eicher reached out to me because we were in we were playing in germany some ecm thing with tim's band tim burns band mm -hmm. and and manfred was like if you have something special you want to try you oh, know really? i'd love to record oh, you you know okay and then I, and then i thought that was right after that gig had happened i was like well then i wrote craig i was like would you be would you want to do this he's like yeah totally let's do it you know so then then i just that I that got know. set up and that that became the bell i, I just started writing for the band you know yeah 
but I was, you know, same, same approach as interpret it. Well, it's just trying to really stay out of the way of the improvising, you know, and just write minimal things, but it's always like a, never as minimal as I, I envisioned, you know, there's yeah, always, a it's little always the more, same. But, yeah. 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 But you're, that's just what I'm striving for. And then, you know, it, I think it, it came out pretty well. Like, you know, that, that piece, the bell on that first record yeah. was really, it's super minimal, you know, it's a beautiful, and that record. was like, beautiful. Oh, man, thanks. Yeah. I really liked working with Manfred on that too, production wise, you know? Yeah. I wanted to ask you like your experience with Manfred and ECM, you know, being one of the best labels in the history, I guess. So how was that like? Yeah, it's well, it started with Tim. We did yeah. a few, few different things and then, or more than that, but only one or two, I can't remember, were with Manfred. And then, you know, then after that, it was with like David Torn was just recording us and Tim would just send it in to them, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I liked, I liked Manfred's ideas and he really seemed to, he was really good at like, that's the take, you know, that, that has the, the excitement, the energy, all that stuff. And I'm, I'm a person it, when I'm on the, the other side, you know, when I'm out in the room playing, I don't have great perspective on what just happened, you know? Sure. <laughs> so, so for me, it's, it's, it's always good to have some producer, but then Manford is also great. Cause I was like, well, can we just do one more just to see? And Manford's like, why we got it. You know, like, like, I think it's good when people can tell me to move on, you know? Yeah. It's important too. You know? And, and, and he was right. That was all. And he's just like, check it out. And he was like, I think the sequence could go like this, you know? And he's like, what do you think? Like, you know, and he, he came up with that, that sequence, you know, especially the first half of it, you know, he's just like, this is, you know, he's like, this is brilliant. You know, and he was, <laughs> he was like getting really excited, you know, um, it, was, it was just, it was fun. And, you know, with, with Tim, Tim's really strong, I would say strong headed and it was interesting. They, they found a way, you know, they, they worked, I thought they worked well together too, you know, but in, in a different way, I was just yeah. sort of like, you know, like for Manfred was just convincing me that it was really good, you know, on my record, you know, so, so that, that, that helps, you know, for me. And then I listened to it later. I was like, oh yeah, definitely. That was the right idea, you know? Yeah. 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 Was, what was the influence? I mean, was ECM like when you were younger? You know, you mentioned Randy Peters, and ob obviously, when I hear you drumming, you have like tons of influences. And uh, mm -hmm. but like, was ECM also part of something that you listened to as a teenager, I guess, or later? Yeah, later. Um, just certain things. I wasn't, I wasn't almost even aware of it as a label mm. till much later. You know, till till that became a thing. Tim's band might be putting out records on. You know. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, oh, yeah, that's that label. They do all that Keith Jarrett stuff. And oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew, yeah, that Jack DeJanet, like I kind of came from it as a fan of certain drummers, <laughs> you know, yeah. like like Jack DeJanet being on it and his stuff with the Keith Jarrett trio, even the standard stuff. And sure. yeah, I don't know. I, I other than like maybe discord and sst like punk labels i wasn't too aware of labels you know even even in like i guess what they called alternative rock or indie rock like like the big punk labels i knew about those i knew about you know like jello biafra's label and uh then people would talk to me like oh you should you should check out sub pop or something and i was like I don't know. I was, I was like, that's really weird focusing on, even though it became, on one, it yeah, started yeah. as, as re, you know, regional, regional things. That's why people were into it. But I was always like, it's just some company someone started. Like it never made sense to me that these bands should sound the same because they're on a certain label or something like that. You know, yeah. even yeah. though, even though that's what, you know, there is a recording aesthetic with certain late, like fat records or ecm <laughs> as opposite it's, as you yeah can. yeah like, yeah sure. like yeah they just have an aesthetic that's uh, often have an aesthetic that's started by one person that also has some some production skill or at least a vision of that you know yeah yeah but yeah mm -hmm. that that's kind of i'm sort of, <laughs> i'm kind of not the 
most observant person in the world sometimes, especially as a younger person, you know, I was just like, I'd only check out the sound. I, I didn't even occur to me how they recorded it or anything like that. You know, I was like more into way more into the ideas and the music, you know, yeah. But like who, kind of... who were the drummers that got you excited like especially for improvised music i guess in the mid 90s or you remember those moments like that you were like yeah, oh man i that's i do yeah there was a like live i saw in the same year when i was maybe 17 i saw joey baron and mm. there was a a drummer named spirit from i think from the bay area that was playing with john chikai like Really yeah. great free player. And there was a drummer named Donald Robinson in the Bay Area. I used to check out a lot. And uh yeah, this, you know, all these Bay Area people. And then um yeah, I saw Jeff Tane Watts with Branford Mars Branford Marsalis Trio. Like that was kind of the first something resembling straight ahead thing I saw live where I was like, holy shit, you know, like what is going on? You know, but they were playing pretty pretty free it was a lot of yeah. swing time but it was pretty free quite open yeah yeah. Pieces. yeah open yeah yeah and uh you know and i was getting into jazz and free jazz and i kind of thought it was all connected and peace and love between those <laughs> six at the time <laughs> and then you know then i moved to the bay area and everyone kind of just hated the other you know everyone hated each other uh i'm exaggerating but, no, but yeah, no, no. yeah yeah sure. you know it was like now i feel like it's super open in new york like you know i go i play more i'm playing more swing rhythm stuff again you know and then huh. tons of free stuff but it isn't like time is you know frowned upon or vice versa you know um but yeah it, i don't know in the yeah mid mid 90s i guess early 90s mid mid and late 90s when i was in the bay area and i felt like i kind of had to keep keep what I was doing a secret from certain people, you know, so I was also playing a lot of like really heavy rock. Like I would call it punk, but it was in that scene in a way, you know, and okay. then, yeah, just straight ahead stuff. I was really going after that, like bebop at post bop playing and starting to play that kind of for, more or less uh, for a living, you know, and then I was studying classical, like new music percussion and playing totally free stuff. And oh. In the Bay Area at the time, that was all, everything was totally separate from the, you know, like no one in any scene even had heard of anyone else in the other scene. <laughs> That's bizarre, man. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so. But did you go like through a standards phase also? Like, did you play standards and? Oh, to yeah, totally. Really? Very much. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. that. I mean, that's what I was doing playing like, I was playing like straight ahead jazz and that's Gigs. what I'd go yeah. do to, to gig, you know? wow you know okay. and there, there's some jazz clubs but just restaurants and whatever you know um oh, interesting. and i was like struggling to get to that even though i was you know wasting all my money on my band my own bands that were you know sleeping on floors and super <laughs> shitty tours you know and uh then my friends were especially bass players i was always friends with bass players and they're like man i'm gonna quit this straight ahead stuff and i was like what are you talking about man you're making a living you know yeah so so that's that you know cool. so that was that but i also just i liked that music a lot you know like yeah. i was super into like you know art blakey max roach charlie parker and i had an older stuff really? too i was really wow. checking out like duke ellington and things like that you know really well w wouldn't connect kind of i mean you know you have such a unique style of playing Oh wow! I mean, I definitely hear your rock influences. That's for sure. When you play uh, with, with some bands, yeah, yeah, but yeah. This straight ahead, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't connect it. Maybe right. Maybe it's hidden. Yeah, well. <laughs> I think if you've heard some, yeah, some recent stuff I did, maybe you'd hear it. <laughs> but but I did when I was playing that, and or especially when I was studying it, then then once what once I was playing it, I didn't really think about it too much. But earlier on, I was like, I'm not, uh, you know, it's like kind of in that Young Lions period of marketing jazz, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and I was sort of like, I don't know if this is, I love the old records and, you know, the music, I love playing it with people, but I'm not sure this is going to be my ultimate expression. You know, I remember thinking that even though I was spending you know five 
six hours a day practicing that stuff and then going and gigging at night, you know, you know, even though, even after all that, even after really going after the tradition, you know, I was kind of like, I think at some point I know I'm just not going to worry about this, you know? Yeah. That's, that, that's, yeah, it's good to, you know, chew the tradition and then just like break it. I think, you know, yeah, I, guess, I, I mean, know. If... and it also, yeah, it also, Right. It, it definitely has to do with people I play with. Also, they push you in certain directions, you know. Yeah, definitely. What, what was the main trigger? You, you moved from uh, the West Coast to New York. I mean, what was the the main reason and how come you decided? Um, de definitely the the music. And um, at the time I was living in L.A., really super low rent situation and and I was on tour constantly my wife was in grad school at the time here in LA and and I you know at the I also was also already playing in Trevor Dunn's band which was in New York with Mary Halverson and oh okay yeah, yeah. and also Mark Rebo's band like Shazad had got we met on the West coast and then he had me go out and play for Mark. And then Mark started this band I was in. So I was already in two bands that were, that I was excited about, you know, from oh, sure. the, yeah. Yeah. in New York, you know, and, and yeah, I just talked to my wife and she's like, she's a designer and she's like, I'm sure I could find work in New York. So if you want to move there, let's just do it. You know? And, and we did, you know, I just saved money and on tour and stuff like that yeah. for a couple of years out here. And then we moved there and it was, relatively seamless you know because i kept i'd go out there to play with mark and trevor and then i'd meet more people and um you know we just set up sessions and then that turned into yeah. gigs and recordings and then you know by the time i moved there i was playing really full time you know with with people out there so yeah. it's kind of magic <laughs> i guess yeah usually people struggle for two years or something yeah you yeah yeah and i did that i did that in the bay area for sure you know like i was working grocery jobs and cooking pizza and shit like that you know <laughs> for for first you know a good amount of years i would say yeah like uh, how did you hook up with trevor i mean i think the first record i heard you on was that sister phantom yeah what was it oh owl fish owl fish yeah owl that's fish, it yeah. Yeah, I, I I love that one. It's I, probably one of the first records with Mary on, also. I yeah, think. I mean, how did you connect with yeah. Trevor? Um, through he was on the in the Bay Area jazz scene before he moved to New York. I yeah. think he moved to New York in two thousand, late two thousand, and or mid two thousand. Anyway, um, it was a couple of ways simultaneously. Like I ended up on some straight ahead jazz gigs with him. And some other things with this guy, you know, this clarinet player, Ben Goldberg. Oh, yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, then I went to Mills College for grad school, which was an accident. W Willie Winant, the uh, percussion teacher there, just was like, you should come to school here, I'll get you scholarships. And I was like, okay, you know, and, and then, <laughs> which is a whole different kind of a change in direction I wasn't even anticipating, but I just decided to go for it just to try to learn more, you know? And, and anyway, I get there and he's like, he's like, yeah, what are you doing in uh next month? I need you to go on tour with tour for me in this band, Mr. Bungle. And I was like, okay, you know, and Trevor's band, you know? And, and I was like, all right. And, you know, and I knew that I was very familiar with their music and I knew Trevor a little bit. And then I, you know, Trevor, I had a gig that Trevor happened to be on the like that night. And he's like, yeah, I heard you're, I heard you're coming on a tour with us. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I hope, so you were on tour with out. Mr. Bungle then? I was going, yeah, I was going to be like, yeah, yeah. I toured with them. It was just a, a couple weeks that. Wow, man. That's that crazy. fall. But then that, then there was all the stuff Willie couldn't do. So I, yeah, I toured with them for like three months after that. How you was know, that like? A, like? It was crazy. You know, I was on, I wasn't even playing drums. I was playing percussion, you know, like oh, okay. all this stuff. I just was had barely any experience with like, you know, marimba, vibraphone, timpani. And, you know, Willie's like, don't worry, I'll get you ready. You know, you, you can, you can learn it all from recordings and there's some, there's notated stuff. But, you know, honestly, at that time I was, I couldn't really look at the page and 
not look at my hands, you know? So I just, I just memorize everything. And some of wow. it was like crazy fast lines. Yeah, and shit, yeah. you know? <laughs> but then, then there was like a lot of tambourines. It was like their beach boys face. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it was great. It was because I already hung with Trevor and, you know, liked him, like got along with him, even though just, you know, I didn't know him well at all, you know? And then, then I met, you know, Patton and, and Trey also, I, I feel like I clicked with, Trey a lot. And that ended up, you know, I ended up playing in Secret Chiefs 3 for years, you know, yeah, Trey's yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just like those guys because it was, yeah, you know, related to that, what I was saying earlier about people being in these divided camps in the Bay Area, like those guys, they might play this insane shit, but they know, they really would listen closely and to, I knew what was going on in so much different music and it was all just music to them. So that, yeah. that, that That's... was where I felt like, Oh, this is like, th yeah, this makes sense. Like, you know, these guys, it finally feels like I don't have to hide anything, you know, hmm. except they're also totally insane on top of <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. But yeah, that was great. Like touring, I learned tons of shit from them, you know, and uh yeah even if i think i mean their aesthetics changing too each knowing each of the everyone in that band you know but like yeah even at the time i was like yeah i think mine wouldn't i don't know i was like my own music i don't think will be so you know jump cut from one thing yeah, to the yeah, next yeah, you know yeah. but, but but they're all you know they're everyone's like trevor is totally different from that now and so is trey you know that was like in a way that was their their old band you know and also probably influenced by zorn you know? yeah, yeah definitely yeah in, in the in the early days you know yeah oh wow that's amazing man but uh you, you mentioned mark rebo how, how was your experience with mark i mean you know he was already quite a big name in europe especially yeah and uh, you know when you guys came to europe how, how was your experience then coming to europe with mark and touring can Oh, it's great. Yeah, it was, uh, I had, I'd only really done a couple European tours before that. And they were in very different circumstances, like only one on the sort of like jazz scene, you know, on the Euro jazz network or whatever they call yeah, it. And that okay. was with, that was with Trevor and Mary actually. And, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was just like, it was strange getting treated really well like that <laughs> you know because although on the yeah the bungle stuff was like that too but it was just more rugged rock stuff in a way you know even though those were big shows and you know this is like yeah we just show up with carrying almost no gear you know and then like you know i'd, I'd maybe have symbols at that point and electronics and yeah anyway it was and it was also the sets were long you know mark plays like an hour 45 minutes yeah. i mean for me that, that was like longer i was used to like like the 20 minute noise set <laughs> you know or like that's i was always like why wear everybody out but then you know i learned from mark and and just all kinds of people that like it needs an arc and it needs to yeah. it's like a ritual thing you know and you know, also on the Haitian Vodou scene, like all that stuff was like coming together. Like, oh yeah, sometimes you gotta just play for a long ass time, you know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, playing with Mark was great. It was like a you know trio with Shazad, who I love to play with, and like there's a lot of freedom in it, you know. And and we could play super loud and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it was related, but I think I was sort of looking back. I think. I don't know. I, I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb in a way. Like I was just playing like really hard, you know, like way, way too loud for the venue and stuff like that, you know, because I was coming out of like heavy rock you yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> and improv too. But, you know, Mark would just go so crazy that I just follow him, you know, but I think we look like we kind of look kind of nuts, <laughs> you know, it's possible. I'm not sure. That's what Shazad was telling me. <laughs> If he can be um, believed, <laughs> but, uh, at the same time, you you, you kind of were also in Mary's trio, right, with Aber and Mary. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. How, how how did that happen? I mean, I know you played with Mary, and you know, I, I remember I did a tour with Aber and in two thousand and mm -hmm. 
seven, I think, or eight. And mm -hmm. I think that's where you guys hooked up, probably. Or, but how did that story with yeah. that trio begin? Yeah, that that was. I think Mary's either the first gig or the first record was around made in around two thousand seven. I think. Yeah, yeah. And I I think that, you know, Trevor's trio. We were, we were doing so much stuff, like we did two two full on. U.S. tours opening for the Melvins and then Fantomas and then mm, oh wow okay you know Europe stuff and and then Trevor just I think decided to take a break from it like around 2006 you know because he was just burning out on that the music that we were playing we were playing the same music you know over and over and I thought it was great like it got to be a really good band you know but then uh yeah then suddenly it seemed like we were just freed up from that whole band which was taking up all this time and i think you know mary always wrote music anyway like you know she had different collaborative things sometimes i was involved with those and then she was like yeah i'm having you know she got she also kicked back into really like liking jazz you know like mm -hmm. like yeah. which which she had come up she'd grown up with but then she sort of went off in a different direction you know and then she was like, I really like, you know, this playing forms and certain chords and things like that. So she's like, I'm writing music, you know, that speaks to that, you know, and and I was thinking of, what do you think about John Bear and you? And I was like, sure, I'd, you know, I'd love to do that. I had only played with John like once at that time. And uh, yeah, that became a trio. And Yeah, such a know. beautiful connection I think you had for that music. You and Bear. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, like, really, thanks. Like, you're yeah, like, I, you know. So cool. Yeah, John. John. John taught me a lot because I think Mary and I are really similar in a way, and and we 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 like lock up really easily, you know, and, and like like all in all kinds of ways, just our energy and re use of repetition and all this stuff, and and we're also like big st steadiers. Not that John isn't, but yeah, no. <laughs> I'd say John is always he's the one taking the most chances and pushing us in a totally different direction you know and it used to at first i was like holy shit is this cool like i was almost uncomfortable for mary or something and mary was into it so i was like all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go for it too so then yeah i just feel like we yeah john was really the a great choice for that because it was an unpredictable yeah. factor he's such an expressive player he's just amazing you know yeah and the sound. Oh, he's probably the funniest guy on this jazz circuit, man. It's like one of yeah, them. yeah. There, there's that too. That was another thing Mary I love loved that. about him. You know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, j just like you know, two more things I would like to ask you. Like especially, you know, we mentioned Tim Byrne, and mm -hmm. uh, how did he connect you? And uh, I mean, obviously, you started playing with all these players. But he slowly, you know started to play also but like when was the first encounter of you and tim and you playing his music which is highly right. complicated i mean how was that all like for you yeah yeah i i knew i knew a little bit about tim from hearing about him and a friend of mine showed me on you know on that that sandborn show night music from the you know like i saw him on that and then yeah i used to go to the when i lived in in like Oakland, California, I'd go to the, the Berkeley Public Library and check out records and Tim oh, some of Tim's stuff was there for some reason, you know, and like well, and then and then I'd heard about Tom Rainey, so I was getting into him and it was it was the group with Tom and, and Craig, you know. Oh man, yeah. So, and I, I listened to it and I I remember just going, Whoa. <laughs> I, I was I was I just remember going, I could never play this shit. You know, <laughs> I remember thinking that. And, and then uh yeah, years later, like, I think Tim saw me play a, a gig with Trevor and Mary. And then he also saw this. There was some video. When I was touring at the band Shushu, I went crazy one night and was real, like, fucking up a Motel 6, like a hotel room. <laughs> and uh, there was a video of that. It was just a funny video on, on YouTube for a while. And Tim fa saw that somehow. And he was like, he's like, yeah, I saw you in that Motel 6. I'm a fan of your work. <laughs> you <know? laughs> okay. Uh, so we like to say, you know, he's always like, yeah, that was his audition tape. That was when I knew I wanted to play with him, you know. Um, but anyway, he then like at one point I, I met Matt Mitchell on a Shane Ensley gig. <laughs> and 
And at that moment, Mary and Matt were in a, a like a bigger group that Tim had for just a, it was some gig at the stone, you know, just mm. some like eight piece group. Really great. Like I heard the, you know, the recording from that and I really liked it, you know, and, and then, t- you know, I met Matt and we, we became friendly and he was like, Oh yeah. You know, I, I think I want to come, I'm going to come to New York if you want to play with Tim sometime. I was like, that'd be great. You know? And, and then Mary at the same time was like, yeah, let's go play with, let's have a session with Tim, you know? And I was like, okay. And he's like, she's like, I'll get you the music in advance. Cause you know, she knows like, you know, like herself, I like to know what's going on, you know, or like check stuff out in advance, you know? And, and then I found out later that Matt, Matt and Mary were like, we got to get chess playing with Tim. Like they had this plan, you know, and they didn't tell Tim or me, you know? And and then I don't remember if Matt was on that session, actually, it might've just been Mary and Tim and I, because, you know, we, Matt was living in Philadelphia at the time. And then, yeah, so I went there and I had checked out some pieces in advance, but I saw, yeah, I, I didn't think I did very well. Like we weren't even supposed to play those pieces, but, Mary and I were like to Tim, like, yeah, let's play some of your music. And Tim's like, really? Okay, sure. We can look at this. And then, and then he, you know, he kept a pause. He's like, man, sorry about this. I'm making you read all the shit. And I was like, no, no, no problem. And you know, I thought I sucked, but, but Tim, Tim just like, he wanted to play again. And I think based on the improvising part, you know, he just mm-hmm. liked, like, liked what we were doing. And then somehow it just morphed into, he wanted to start this band with, with, you know, Matt Mitchell and Oscar and I, and he had been playing with Oscar separately. And then, you know, we just, he just, we just started rehearsing like a lot actually, and then played a gig in New York and it was kind of on, on from there, you know? Yeah. How did you, how did you approach or still do? I mean, these compositions, you know, again, these are these long forms and uh, yeah. like, did, did you ever talk with him what to do or like you just got the lead sheet and just like, okay, jump into it or. Yeah, he, he was, he wanted to be careful about telling me too much what to do, but I knew his idea was that I was out of percussion, not just drum set. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of came from this, you know, he was tight with Julius Hemphill and sure. Julius Hemphill was sort of a, a, a mentor for him. And he'd, he'd reference I, some gig with Julius and I don't remember who was on it, possibly Oliver Lake or somebody. And then, and then maybe, I don't remember who was on percussion and drums, but it was someone playing a lot of percussion and just two horns, you know, and he, I think like that, like that, st- that was in this, probably the seventies, you know, and he had stuck with him and he, he just, like we started by playing some pieces Julius gave Tim a long time ago that were, you know, at that concert, you know, and Tim was like, it was the greatest concert and it was me and like Alex Klein or somebody like it was two people in the audience and Tim was one of them, you know, like a loft loft scene. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, you know so, so he always, I think he wanted to, he was inspired by that, you know? And so he, he wanted me to, you know, he was just had this idea of horns and percussion and then Matt Mitchell's, you know, Matt's such a, a freak and can play so many lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, while, while improvising, as well and so i think he just had this idea of slightly more less overtly bombastic and more chamberish group you know um yeah so and no you know he didn't want to use bass bass player yeah so that, that's how that started and i yeah so tim he wouldn't tell me a lot other than that you know i just i just started coming up with these different setups of percussion mm, stuff okay. and I, i'd always have a drum set there a small drum set and um yeah one time he early on he did say you know we're all playing these lines but you can make up your own line you know as a as the drummer or percussionist like i don't have to nail everything and and then my approach would always be make sure i know what's going on in every line but then like i need to know everything before i can sort of blow over it you know that's mm-hmm. that's, that's how i see it but you know, Tim's cool with that, but he's also cool with just not knowing what's going on, you know, like, uh, as long as you're not locking the band into something, that's kind of what he, I got the feeling that's what he did, you know, and then, then, you know, during improv stuff, 
I remember he was like, you know, I want to say something to you guys about that we don't need to, like he felt like something was getting locked in or restricted in a way. And and he was worried about even bringing it up because he didn't want to give us a complex about it, you know, like, so he's, he's very, tries to be hands, he's just, he's pretty hands off until he thinks something would be, is getting in the way of us growing on, growing into a new yeah, you know, growing with the music or something like that. So, hmm. so yeah, he didn't tell me a lot. And I just, you know, some of that stuff was tricky, but I realized a lot, a lot of those sections later in the piece are going to come in before the listener really realizes they're there. Like Matt, Matt's sort of playing something out of time. And I just need to know all yeah. that without preferably just by ear without even reading, you know. But then I started, you know, he asked me to bring vibes in. So then I started you know, reading the lines, like, like learning the lines that way. And I never, I never memorized it as far as vibes goes. I'm always just having to read like everyone else, you know, Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah. On drums, I just make sure my approach is always really just know the music. So then you can be as flexible as possible with it, you know, and treat it like an improvisation really. Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I love what you did, you know, because like it's such a different band than what he did with Rainey and it would be so easy to fall in the, rainy footsteps you know like just but you yeah. did like completely your own approach which i love and it's it creates such a unique oh, wow different sound of the group i think because when i hear okay. burn with rainy it's like you know tom has this it's tom you know and you just yeah totally approach it differently which i really love you know it's a different sounding group so it's really wow, cool. thanks yeah that, that wasn't yeah it wasn't conscious for me but you know perhaps what tim was telling me Maybe he's <laughs> he made me go in a different direction without me even knowing it, you know, because I love Tom, you know. Oh, sure, yeah, man. for yeah. sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Chess, one more last thing, or you know, how, how was your experience that album, Uncharted Territories, playing with Dave and uh, yeah, you know, Evan Parker being there, right? And Craig also, like, how did you end up on that one actually, and especially your, you know, playing with Dave? I mean. And all those guys actually <laughs> right right i know that was a a left turn in a way but um yeah it started dave dave was in first time i met him i was playing with tim and that was in in london actually he happened to be there and he caught he knows tim a little bit and yeah yeah he knows tim from i don't know where but they've they know they've known each other probably since way back i would guess you know and yeah, anyway, Dave came to that show and and he seemed to like it a lot. I didn't really talk to him then, actually. I just we met him and he was really nice, you know. Like, but he was talking to Tim more, you know. And then um I after the bell was released, Dave came. I didn't even know he was there. He came to a show at um the North Sea Jazz Festival of, of oh, really? Matt and Craig oh, wow. and I. Yeah, and, and he actually tweeted about it. He was like, I just caught a great set of blah blah oh, wow. blah, you know. And I was like, Oh shit. And then, you know, then and I knew and Craig was playing with them. You know, Craig was in that group prism with them, you know. Yeah. And that was all going on at the same time. And uh yeah, then then Dave finally maybe sometime in 2017 he was like yeah you know i've been playing with he called me you know out of the blue and was like i've been playing with evan again and we want to do something we were talking about maybe with you and you know with craig and you you know and and i was like sure (laughs) you know and then and then it was like yeah we're thinking maybe it was it was like months ahead you know month like six months from now or something i was like okay and i and you know i i'd never i didn't know dave or especially at all just like well that would be that'd be great but i'll just see what happens in six months you know and and then also dave was like when at the time i think i talked to him at at the north sea thing actually and he was like yeah you you have a great way of writing where it's not getting in the way of what's going on it's Mm -hmm. like so open it's so defined at the same time and he's like yeah if you want to write anything for when we do this you know you know you you should and i i did uh, i ended up writing a couple things that we played and are on that record you know but but it's a lot of free stuff yeah like totally open yeah 
but yeah, he was great. You know, that's another person I've been listening to for so long, you know, and then, and then to play with them was kind of a trip and especially, yeah, I don't know. I knew a lot of his eighties, nineties, I knew a lot of his seventies stuff too, but you know, I, I was actually seeing him in the nineties, you know, like especially the late nineties, early two thousands. Oh, the the Quintet, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It was, you know, it was so, so different. And then hearing him, you know, we were just playing wide open and all this ex- extended technique stuff. And, you know, and Craig and I were just doing our thing. And I thought it was for me playing on those sessions was, it was just interesting. Cause I was like, wow, this is like a, I felt the different generations so like Craig and I, and, and then Evan and Dave, you know, right. there's just yeah. whole, whole different, styles and also evan and dave are hilarious together <laughs> they're just like they've known each other so long it's Br- really british fun. right <laughs> is yeah totally british yeah and then you know and then craig and i are doing our thing i thought yeah it was just a nice a nice pairing you know yeah it's beautiful man it's such a nice record i mean and the sound and everything it's just great yeah, yeah yeah that was cool yeah we also we we did it upstate too and that was nice to just get away and do that you know for yeah. three days or whatever it was yeah, beautiful man. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, Chess, just not to take more of your time. What, what are the plans for 2023? And I, I saw you were playing in Vienna with Tomika Reed and Craig, I think, in March. Yeah, it's Craig's group. Yeah. Oh, it's his. It's, it's a new band, or? Yeah, yeah, we did it. We've done a we did a tour last oh, fall, okay. 2021, okay. and then we, we played okay. you know some festivals over the since then. Also, yeah, there's a version i would say where you know mary halverson has sub for tamika <laughs> so you know which was just funny but I, I don't know and there was some talk of maybe all, all four of us playing t- as well but oh, well. Yeah. Yeah, but the craig had this idea this uh, trio with tamika and myself you know and we yeah tamika and i are playing all these electronics too and craig is as well so it's pretty oh, wow okay wild you know fantastic like we're just causing causing problems all over the place <laughs> yeah, yeah that that's that's happening and then yeah i'm i'm writing a another record with this 10 piece like chamber group actually oh wow there were like a lot of electronics in that too um like obnoxious drum machine stuff and yeah some di- different classical players but also you know players on the scene that i'm sure you would you're familiar with too yeah. <laughs> you know uh yeah but yeah, that that's I'm, I'm recording that in May, but I have a, a week at the Stone coming up in a few weeks in in New York. And oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So a lot, a lot of it's not everyone from that, but I try to involve those musicians as much as possible, and Fantastic. I'm sort of working out a lot of the ideas right now. Fantastic, cool. L- looking forward. Uh, hopefully, I'll, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll, I could catch you in March. If you were come closer than Vienna, uh, I'll definitely come to check you out. So. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. but cool, great man. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Really appreciate it. So. Mm-hmm.